Hey YouTube, let's paint some Baratheon Sentinels for A Song of Ice and Fire. So let's start things off with a trick for painting, hold on a second, metal armor, where instead of going over all of the metal parts of the figure and putting on a full base coat, we just overbrush all of the armored bits with metallic. Overbrushing metallic paint on in this way leaves black between the panels, between the scales in the crevices that creates definition of all the shapes on the figure and makes things easier for us in the long run. Obviously, this doesn't work over a white primer. So if you're going to paint armor this way, you can't do a zenithal sketch first. Instead, the metallics themselves will act as your zenithal sketch. The black primer is going to be your shadow color, a mid-tone gray metallic, in this case the Aho model color gunmetal gray will be your mid-tone, which again, you want to make sure you apply without actually filling in all of the shadowed areas. And your highlight color will be Vallejo model color Duraluminium. Hey, I said it right. Duraluminium. Duraluminium. Okay, I'm gonna take that extra syllable out. Anyway, this you want to apply from uh, an upward angle. And with that, mimic the appearance of light hitting the armor from a diffused sunlight as though through an overcast sky. Be really sparing with this, catch the edges, make sure there's very little paint on your brush. Just don't obliterate the mid-tone. Of course, there's a lot more than just metals on this guy, so... We have to take a couple of steps to make sure that our workflow is going to function for those parts as well. Now, I fully expect that I'm going to lose some people here when I break the airbrush back out after I've already painted part of the figure. But there is a method to my madness, so hear me out and see if this kind of a approach works for you. A lot of the time you'll see a zenithal undercoat used as a time-saving technique. Slap chop, Anger's eye, or whatever you want to call it, we use that zenithal sketch to save ourselves time in the blending stages on a model. But prepping your models this way isn't just about time savings. For some people, myself included, blending with acrylics is quite difficult. We can't reliably get the effect that we're looking for. Or it's just too time consuming and tedious. So in those cases, even though it takes a little bit longer, it might be worth it to come back and reestablish that zenithal sketch after you've already painted part of the model using another method. But Craig, you're asking, why would you do it in this order? Why not just zenithal the entire model and then go from there? Well, my imaginary interlocutor, I have an answer for that. In fact, you've already heard it. It's because we wanted to make sure the model was primed black for the metallics. There's a little more to it than that, but essentially that's why we're going about it in this fashion and not just a general all over zenithal followed by the normal process. As to the specific color choices, instead of a black shadow on the cloak, which I easily could have done and saved myself a step, I did want the eventual yellow of these colors to interact with the underpainting in a more interesting way, so I chose blue. Uh, this Molotov petrol color will combine with our yellow contrast paint, well actually express color paint, but you'll see in a minute, uh, to create more of a greenish cast to the shadows. Now, a lot of the time you might expect someone to say, well, you don't technically need an airbrush to do it this way. And while that's true, I wouldn't recommend it. On these models, you'd have to work your dry brush of white into some very, very tight quarters in order to get the result you're looking for. It would be less smooth and just overall not as easy to do. Anyway, after rebuilding that zenithal sketch, it's time for... Yellow, which is a notoriously difficult color to paint. I, well, okay, actually, I don't think that's true. I think that using old school methods of miniature painting, it's a notoriously difficult color to paint. But if you are working over a value sketch that ends in a white highlight, you're gonna have a relatively easy time, almost no matter what you do. Actually, I would almost argue that when you're using thin, transparent, but pigment dense paints over a zenithal sketch, yellow is maybe the easiest color to make look good. It's naturally very transparent, so it interacts with the colors underneath. That means that if you have blue underpainting, you're going to get green shadows. You have pink underpainting, you're going to get orange shadows. It's a trick that you see all over the place, and it actually makes painting yellow a snap. Like, it's super, super easy if you prep correctly. 
really the skill in painting yellows using a technique like this is in choosing which yellow you're going to use and exactly how you're going to apply it. In this instance, I'm using Express Color Imperial Yellow, which I think is great, but I started with a brush application and pretty quickly decided that I was not a huge fan. The way one coat paints pool in the recesses is often a desirable trait, but in this instance, I just felt that it was too much. The coverage was a little patchy. I didn't quite like the way that it was flowing into the recesses, so I put away the brush and got the airbrush out again and went through this whole rigmarole one more time. Again, the chief challenge here is managing overspray to keep exactly how much it impacts your metallics to a minimum. However, once you're on the yellow stage of this process, any overspray on the armor is going to look more like a reflection and less like a mistake. So it's not as big a deal. You just need to be fairly tidy with it and fairly careful. All right, with the yellow sprayed, let's move on to the... <laughs> All right, House Baratheon's colors are black on yellow, so I figured it made sense to model that in our paint scheme. So the helm crests got a coat of black lotus from the Express Color range. I quite like this color because it's not actually black, and not actually black is a kind of an important thing to keep in mind when you're painting black. Usually you're gonna have to highlight black with some other color anyway. So why not skip the middle person and throw it on to begin with? You get effectively a black in the shadowed areas and save yourself several steps of highlighting and it'll read as black enough on the table anyway. For all of their pants, I went with a uh, scale 75 birch. Um, this was not actually the best choice for the job. Not in terms of the color, I really just wanted there to be kind of an off-white neutral shade here so that it didn't distract too much from everything else. But in terms of the brand of paint I grabbed, Scale 75 doesn't have the greatest single coat coverage, so using it for a base color is a bit sketchy. On the other hand, Scale 75 brown leather is an intentional choice because I really just like the way that this paint dries. Uh, it, ends up with a super matte finish, which is just a really great base for a convincing brown leather shade. This is just an all over coat on anything that looks leathery, straps, gloves, backs of the boots, you name it, it gets leathered. And finally, the hammer handles get a quick coat of a mix of the brown leather and the birch color because I didn't really think I needed to worry too much about exactly what shade they were. And now it's time for what this video is really about. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oil washes. Personally, I think that the oil wash is one of the most misunderstood techniques in the hobby. I watch an awful lot of video content about miniature painting and I see these talked about in different ways depending on who's doing the talking. And honestly, I'm not convinced that about half the people that discuss oil washes have ever really used one. So we're gonna go through the exact process and just demonstrate it so that we demystify it for everybody who might think they wanna try it, but hasn't had the courage yet. The only things you need for a successful application of an oil wash are artist grade white spirit and oil paint. Student grade oil paints are just fine, especially for something like this. You don't wanna waste the good stuff. It's also important to make sure that you're using artist white spirits, not hardware store white spirits, because there is a difference. Using the white spirits that are used by professional house painters will wreck your shit, so don't do that. Once you've secured your components, you will need to combine them. As you can see, it takes a very small amount of oil paint and a substantially larger quantity of white spirit in order to get the consistency you're looking for, which is very liquid, such that it runs down the edge of your container. Once you've mixed it, apply it. Kind of, well, like this.
once all your models are good and slathered in oil paint and white spirit, you need to set those aside and don't touch them for a while. How long is kind of up to you, but a general guideline is about 20 minutes. So take your dog for a walk, grab a coffee, drink a beer, do whatever it is you do that takes 20 minutes of your time before you come back to clean everything up. Cleanup can be done with Q-tips or makeup sponges, or if it's on a large piece, even a rag or a paper towel, actually. But anything that's absorbent and soft enough that it's not going to damage the finish of the paint. And you just take your cleaning tool and wipe it on the surface of the model. You want to make sure that you take into account where light is coming from in your imaginary scene. In this instance, I am trying to do most of the wiping from the top down which removes the wash from the upward facing surfaces and pronounced edges, but leaves it in the recesses. Remember too, as you do this, that if you need it, you can always grab a little tiny bit of white spirit, dampen your implement in it, and get just a little bit more of the paint off of one of the raised areas if you want to. So slap on your favorite podcast and get to work wiping your models down. stretch now and it is time for some highlights and this is where another common misconception about an oil wash comes into play i have heard it said that you need to wait up to a day for an oil wash to dry and that is technically true you have to wait up to a day for an oil wash to dry in the recesses where you didn't wipe it off but on raised areas wrinkled fabric upturned facing edges of armor plates no, you don't need to wait a day for that to dry. Of course, there's nothing wrong with waiting that long, but it's not necessarily the case that you have to. I would recommend you experiment a little bit with this, but I have moved on to detail work within a couple hours of applying an oil wash like this when I know that I'm only going to be painting on surfaces that have had all of the pigment removed. It should not take 24 hours to cure. Now, these did get left overnight, because I didn't have time to finish it all in one sitting. Before Edge highlighting the yellow fabric in a two-step fashion, using Scale 75 Sahara Yellow, followed by Scale 75 Tenere Yellow. Edge highlighting in two steps like this gives a really crispy result that I quite liked. On the leather parts of the figures, I went back with Scale 75 Iroko and did some really rough, scratchy, textured edge highlights. I wasn't looking for crispness here. I wanted this stuff to look like worn, used harness. Things that had seen a fight or two, you know what I mean? And Oroko just happens to be my favorite color for achieving that look with leather. One of the things that's often necessary to do after you've applied an oil wash to a metallic is to come back and just bring a little bit of shine back into the finish. For this, I used AK Interactive 3rd Gen Silver. The application for this was almost a dry brush, just picking out details and edges that I wanted a little extra glint. And finally, I decided I wanted a little bit more definition on the pennants, so I mixed the Black Lotus Express color with some sky blue from Scale 75 just to get the tone right, and gave them a pretty liberal rough edge highlight just to add some definition. And with that, I was done. This unit of Sentinels ended up being a really great way to demonstrate the impact of value sketching and oil washes. The intricate details of their scale armor, 
the sharp folds and deep cuts of the cloaks, the varied dynamic poses. These are honestly the types of miniatures that I think of as painting themselves when you use these kinds of techniques. Now that sounds pretentious as hell, but it's true. The shape of the model dictates where the paint goes, and where the paint goes dictates what it looks like. It's really not difficult. So anyway, I hope this video makes oil washes a little bit more accessible for you if you haven't tried them out already. If you have tried them and didn't like the outcome, give it another shot. I'm pretty sure you can make them work too. Adding this technique to my repertoire has really leveled up my painting. So anyway, get out there and try it. See you next time. Bye.